Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is episode 23. Last time we enjoyed a lot of what Cosmo Canyon had to offer and we have entered Cave of the Gi. It is time for Nanaki's Trials with Barrett and Bugenhagen as we have a look at one of the Gi soldiers. And it's time for us to do some puzzle solving with these uh, with these relics here, I believe. Look at these absolutely demonic statue designs. It's incredible in here. Seeing a little bit of the leftovers from a war. Let's run up these walls and take a look around. So, we have an ancient relic to bring to Bugenhagen. That is not the relic we seek. This is... I'm not sure, but I'm pleased to see that you're enjoying yourself. A piece of baobab wood, okay? We get items if we pick up the wrong thing. <laughs> are, we doing a, are we doing a doggy got a bone joke right now? Doggy got a bone. Good boy. Nay, that is not the relic we seek. <laughs> that is but a mere bone. An exquisite beast spine. It's like you want to do it right so you can be efficient, but at the same time you get supplies this way. Oh. Memories of war. The hour of our awakening draws nigh. Okay, well we've got confirmation that this is the artifact, which means we are going to look at everything else. Oh, materia. Look at that tennis ball. We're just doing dog jokes. <laughs> Return the tennis ball that is weirdly not glowing. Most would call that materia. But it is far more than a magic stone. It is a crystallized collection of the planet's memories and knowledge. Ooh, three-star healing materia. Don't mind if I do. Hey, what's this? We're looking at oh, another weapon. Oh no, we're not looking at a weapon. Oh shit! It's a new collar for red, too. Look at this. We are being rewarded with materia and equipment. All of the equipment that a dog likes. A bone, a ball, a collar, and a wood. Stick to, uh, you know, dogs like to chew on their wooden sticks, their piece of wood. Ah, yes. An armament of the veil. The carvings on its hilt should look familiar. Indeed, you'll find the very same markings on your own body. Wow. His, like, tattoos, except for the 13, of course. We got a Mystic Collar. Watcher's Spirit. Deplete the Vengeance Gauge to increase allies' ATB. Potency proportional to the amount expended. And activate when the Vengeance Gauge is full for a bonus. Very cool. That's awesome. And we get an extra Materia slot. Well, this is all about vengeance mode, so... Let's go for those two. And then we don't really know what to expect in this place, but... We'll grab something else. Maybe I'll grab the revival materia. But I should be fine with just Phoenix Downs with just the two of us. Do the empowerment materia just to get AP on that one. Okay. What's up here? Oh, and here. What item is this? We have ourselves a rock. 
Okay. Nay, that is not the relic we seek. Oh. Oh, oh. oh sorry. I haven't <laughs> slept well of late. A crimsonite crystal. You're just passing out because we're taking so long with our treasure hunting here. Nothing up here. And another one up here. Ooh. Hey, this looks like a relic. This also looks pretty important. Ah, a remnant of our struggles, of our desires. Struggles and desires, and then there was also the the other one, which is like a weapon. Will it replay the dialogue when you pick it up, I wonder? Oh, he's automatically bringing it back. Get rid of that thing! <laughs> oh, damn. Combo, Cosmic Canyon battle theme. Okay, but what about this other item? How interesting. Okay. Go for me, will ya? I want to block so I can fill up my vengeance gauge. There we go. Good, 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 good. There we go. Perfect block. Alright, vengeance mode's full. So now we can do... Watcher's Respite. Oh no, don't watch his respite. That's the wrong one. Hang on. <laughs> that was the wrong move. Hang on. Alright, let's go again. Wait. Uh, watch his spirit. I have to activate vengeance mode. There we go. And now I can do it. I got confused with my two watches. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. It up and weapon ability mastered. There you go. That's how you do it. <laughs> that spectre you fought was a fallen king. Even in death, their lingering enmity manifests as such. They who wander in search of retribution. That's kind of pathetic. Do not be so quick to denigrate your enemies, nor make light of their plight. Consider this statue. It has been placed in this chamber for a reason. Handle it with the utmost care. I will. Deliver unto us the remnants of our past. Damn. Gather statues to proceed. It's very interesting because, like, I, w I went to put it down, but it automatically walked us over with the statue. I was going to check the other item, so it's kind of funny. Um, I forgot to assess that enemy, but I assume that we'll fight another of the G, of the Gi, so. Well, if it isn't a Gi arrow. Its point is coated with a poison that rapidly circulates through the body, slowing the wounded until they are completely turned to stone. Nice. Oh, there you go. We got a Gi Warrior's Charm. So an accessory. Because there was dialogue, I was like, oh, I feel like that's obviously our one. But it wasn't. It was the statue. Um, increase the limit gauge fill rate by 10%. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. to us the remnants of our past so we got to take this through the place got 
this music though. Are we gonna get anything from Barrett? got the attitude of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now. <laughs> okay, where am I taking this now? Ooh, okay. Oh shit. Dude, this is incredible. I love what you've done with the place. Okay, we've got four statues, okay. Are these altars? Whoa. Look at these Cthulhu looking ass things. Interesting. Cause my first thought was, are we gonna make it out of this place alive? <laughs> Its decor is indeed the opposite of inviting. These look like the statue I picked up. If there is a reason for everything, then one could argue that everything has no reason. Regardless, you know what you must do, don't you? Deliver unto us. The remnants of our past. Restore them to their rightful place. So, you reckon that we're going to be able to use a Phoenix down or cast a uh, Revive on Gein Attack for an instant KO? <laughs> How do I, uh. Oh! Oh, one statue's already in. Right. I just like the statue looks like it was emanating the same glow as this, but it's. And I thought that the game was. The statue was uh, resonating because we were close by. That's why it was coming out with energy. But uh, of course, there's already a thing in there. It's already been activated. So we'll put the ruby statue in the ruby red area. But of course. Two more to go. We got our first one free. Incredible design in this place. It's very interesting because they had like the war with the Gi, but they've like, then there's these whole statues and monuments and everything down here representing them. Cause like, Red freaks out. He's like, wow, the Gi made it this far. I'm like, they're, it's, they're built in this place. Look at them. Also, we got another statue here. The amber one. We didn't even have to really work for that one. One more to go already. Our anger gives way to calm. go down this way. I hope we get to face another one of those Gi Warriors so that Barrett can assess it. 
Because I went to check if I had assess on red and then, um, forgot. I only got two legs here, you know. Oh, well, never mind then. Hang on. Uh, just in case we end up facing one, um, I'll put the assess material on. Just in case. Fortification material. Swimming red is so cursed. stone statues of them and they're huge too. Uh, they've done an incredible job showing the scale of these enemies here. What's the other one? What would that, what's that color like? Hmm. I can't think of it at the moment. Are we gonna fight? Yes! Good. All right. And I put a cess on for good reason. There we go. Spirits of the Gi that perished during the invasion of Cosmo Canyon, now cursed to haunt its caverns. They were sealed underground, lest they unleash their deep-seated hatred upon innocence exploiting their elemental weakness with magic attacks or hitting them with healing spells will pressure them. Yeah, hell yeah. You can actually do healing spells to pressure them. They spin their spears to deflect all ranged physical attacks, hitting them with strong close range physical attacks while they are doing this will pressure them. They will not remain dead so long as a Gi Sorcerer is present. <laughs> Oswe Canyon battle theme, so good. This is one of the rare times where you'll want to try and steal from an enemy as well, because steal and morph hasn't really been super uh, good so far, because they it's mostly like the item that they drop is what you can steal or morph, or the rare item. Unlike when you can like steal or morph rare equipment and items that you wouldn't get by any other means. Alright. Love the voice work, like the taunting. So cool. Not getting my, uh, blocks in time, sadly. Oh, that doesn't really do anything when I'm on my own, does it? Rhett can't, there's no party members ATB gauges to increase. I think we did all right back there. Very cool. Ooh, so enemies normally fade away with the life stream. The green, the ghee fade away with evil. Mm -hmm. 
glad that wasn't like uh, too painful in terms of having to get these items not dragged out for too long which I appreciate intertwined with the Gee, for they first came to these lands many millennia ago. This sanctuary is proof of their persistence, for it was built to ensure that they never escaped. But if they were sealed away thousands of years ago, how'd they break out and attack the Vale? That I cannot answer. Only the Gee themselves could. But enough about them. You are here to learn about yourself, Naraki. So the sanctuary was built to keep them in. This cave serves as a boundary between our world and that of the Gi. It was vital to them and their plans. Were the Gi to seize control of it, the canyon would be doomed. And the people. When the Gi moved against us yet again, a certain watcher recalled this vulnerability. Huh? Since time was of the essence, he entered the cave without reinforcements. As he had feared, it was teeming with key, ready to descend upon the village. Determined to protect the veil, he passed from one foe to the next, felling all who dared oppose him. Hold on. If there was a watcher who single-handedly saved the canyon, how come I've never heard of them? <laughs> For now, you should focus on your own struggles with the Gee. Their malice grows more potent. Little tease, little tease. He pounced, did he? Dude. your trial. But that's easier said than done. What in the god of war is going on in this soundtrack right now, dude? That's incredible. Dude, the history and world building of Final Fantasy VII and then having that expanded on in these remakes is such a joy. Like, look at this place. This is exactly how it looked in the original, guys. They even kept the evil lava, right? It's the red ambience. Barrett is such an MVP in this game. <laughs> Certainly got ambience. Time to complete our trial. This music is nuts. Whoa, look at those enemies. Have we got new variants of, like, gee monsters? Two-Face. Oh, dude. Holy shit. Let's make it. Wow. The Two-Face enemy. That's awesome. Cursed beings that float in caves, they were once masks used in the Gi's rituals, but have since become possessed by their owner's overwhelming enmity. One side shows a pleasant smile, while the other shows terrible anger. 
They become pressured when suggesting their opponent take a gamble. Hitting them with a powerful offensive ability at this time will spin the roulette, enhancing or enfeebling their assailant depending on which face they land. I think the two-faced enemy shows up for the first time in the original around Corel Prism. Z. But then they've been um, they've been repurposed into gi masks. Ah, uh, the teeth is so cursed. That evil ass mask. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, oh leave it dude. to me. Um, Barrett. <laughs> Hey, nice, it landed on a positive one. Sorry. You shivering yet? Right now. You ready for some fun? Here What's happening? Last chance. Sorry. Oh. Huh. So when it's about to die, it does a gamble. You can build up the stagger meter. Oh, it's okay. So it landed on a good one. Oh, interesting. This is crazy. This is more than I could have ever imagined that they would do for this place. Very impressed with it. It's the most exciting part about playing these types of remakes is you're like, how, what are they going to do with this area? How are they going to, like, change this or add to it? Now, this is where we came from. I've just turned around. Let's take it in this music, because goddamn... Waterfalls. I think we did all right back there. Sidewinder is good. I'm expecting Kratos to come out of here, dude. Kratos. The Gods of War. Ah, oh, yes, the stinger. So how are we supposed to open this thing? How oh, indeed. Ideas, monarchy. Dude, look at the bones on that shit. Is that our gee boss man that we're seeing? Really, so it does it every time, even if you do a crap load of damage. Did I do good or did I do good? <laughs> what? Hello, Calamitous Bazooka? 
Look at that. Smackdown. Nice. That ability's come back. A wicked firearm imbued with the rancor of a tribe of fallen warriors. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, so he's got fire and barrier. Um... Cover HP when dealing damage and keep this. Critical hit. Calamitous bazooka indeed. Okay, so we gotta say the magic words to this thing. Ooh, we got gee warriors. Ah, okay. Oh, Gee Archer, it's a new one. Okay. <laughs> so cool. Spirit to the Gee that perished during the invasion of Cosmic Canyon, so just the same description. Uh, exploiting the element's weakness with magic attacks or hitting them with healing spells will pressure them. So there will also be a Gee Sorcerer at some point. Oh, I want to do cure. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> cool. That's sick. I love that they've brought that in still. Reign of Death. And don't come back. Very cool. This track feels right at home in Final Fantasy 16 as well, I would say. Big Final Fantasy 16 vibes. You sure Soken didn't help out on this soundtrack? The chains of Olympus will not bind me, Athena! I'm coming for you, Hades! <laughs> Literally, though. Go with me, we are I'm trying to do synergy attacks. Nice. Wow, even when they're staggered, they still get uh, the last chance. It might be a guaranteed positive one, though. Who knows? I love that it's like, how will you proceed? 
Yes. And then it's just pull a chain. <laughs> I will proceed by pulling a chain. Oh. Oh no, it's a little bit bad this time. Okay, so a broken fastener. Okay. So we have to put something underneath the... We have to put something underneath the... No. How's that gonna work? Okay. a broken fastener. Just cast slow. <laughs> it's that easy. So it can't be fastened. Can I switch characters? I can't. Can I Barrett run through? Oh, I secure the chain to something. There's my hint. Yeah, duh. Okay. I just had to pull the chain a second time. Do we have the sorcerer this time? Yes, cool. We've got the sorcerer this time. Exploding elemental weakness with magic or hitting them with spells. Pressure them. They evade or have basic attacks and offensive abilities, but will become unable to do so while pressured, casting spells or resurrecting fallen gear. There you go. You want to attack them first. There you go. nearly there. Great. Got these stingers. Alright, what you gonna do? Nice. Da, 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 da. It's only one thing I have to say in an area like this, and it's to do with the game overall, is Final Fantasy VII, the original game, it's not a hard game. It's, ve it's very easy. It doesn't pressure you to really do much. You can very much breeze through the game unless there are specific restrictions put on you, like in Wutai when you lose all me your materia. And that can be a challenge if you're caught off guard. But, like, in this game, it's the same. <laughs> like, it's pretty easy through most of the combat. We're even on dynamic difficulty for a while now, and it's kind of the same. Like, in the casual mobs, the summon fights on Max Fury are excellent. The boss fights are so much fun. Uh, but there's, like, certain elements where I'm going up against, like, the Stinger. And in the original Final Fantasy VII, that's a difficulty spike of an enemy. They're tanky, they're strong, and they'll mess with you so much. Uh, but they kind of go down like a chump in this one. It's really interesting to see that difference. And it makes me very excited to play hard mode in this version. Because I'm up to the second to last chapter in hard mode in Remake. Just playing that over time. Um, and coming into uh, Rebirth with that in mind. You're just like thinking about the tactics of, uh, of hard mode. And like what you're restricted by because you can't use items so you've got to do like other things oh my god i just got so i just got buffs and debuffs there yeah it's just one of those things just one of those things oh 
me bunching them all up together. <laughs> More empowerment material, okay. me of those altars. <laughs> there is a similarity, yes. But this sanctum is much more ancient and serves a rather different purpose. The altars we came upon before were built to imprison the king. This, however, was built to provide the Cetra with a means to commune with them. Commune with them? Why would the Cetra do that? The Gi were the enemy. <laughs> Good and evil friend and foe. Dichotomy is not set in stone, as beautiful as the winds. But for now, Nanaki, let us concentrate on the matter at hand, clearing a path to the truth. That reminds you of those statues, huh? See what we're doing here. Making bridges. Okay. chain please uh, is this one gonna be this one looks like it works <laughs> nope uh, another broken faster on the other side and now I gotta find a thing okay <laughs> it's that stick of mine it's a sure good darn thing that there was this in the vicinity Five years ago. Oh, it's time. We've got the vending machine, the conveniently placed vending machine. And uh, someone was kind enough to come and install a Magnata books and a bench here in this Gi sanctuary. 
Uh, it's so funny. Doesn't really belong here aesthetically, but fuck it, we ball. Okay, let's have a rest. Sleep on the bench. <laughs> Great. All right. Now I think we're good with our materia setup and equipment. All that's left is to be uh, delivered unto this madness that we're about to witness. I can't wait to see what Big Boy is going to look like. Whoa! Here's our big arena. Okay. What is it? Their ire manifests once more! Do not underestimate this foe! Dude. Mm -hmm. Talk about an axe to grind. Dude. Dude. Look at him. Holy shit. Listen to this music, dude. He looks exactly as I expect him to look, dude. Oh, wow. Look at the skull that he's got. That's a very interesting looking skull. With the spine attached. Look at the fucking... Wow. Dude. It's like a four-eyed dog-like creature with the feather and then the spine. Look at this predator adornment right here. The spines coming out of his shoulder blades. There is an incredible level of detail in here. And this weapon too. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, in the original, it's incredible because you walk into this chamber and it's like this creepy face on the wall. And Bugenhagen's like, what the hell is this? And he freaks out. He's like, no! And the face does this crazy transformation and then the boss fight starts. <laughs> and I was really hoping really hoping that it would have the creepy ass face on the wall but he appears in a dust cloud instead but the, f the face always creeped me out as a kid I thought that was iconic I wish that was here but outside of that look at this dude look at him angry thrashing me all right let's get an assess on this dude oh he's draining the leader of the Gi, a people who were driven to extinction and cursed to roam as spirits, rejected by the life stream. He and his clan have been sealed in an underground cave, left to fan the flames of their hatred and the red miasma that envelops them. Will he summon fire spirits that possess our characters? Inflicting enough damage will pressure him. A curse will activate when the soul flames possess a statue, so it's a statue instead. Halve HP, half MP, deplete ATB, shrink battlefield. Staggering Gein attack will undo the curse. Doom will inflict instant death after a certain amount of time. Okay, now comes the next test. Casting Cure on him. It does damage him. It does damage him. Alright, you gotta... It's time, guys. <laughs> Eggs potion. You have to do it. If you're if you've played the original game, doesn't matter if this is a waste of an X potion in this version. It simply must be attempted. For you. It does a thousand. Okay, it's reduced. It does a thousand damage. That's a free thousand at the cost of an X potion. Not exactly free. <laughs> Can you let me go? There we go. That's funny, though. Dude, his attacks are incredible. Alright, time to get serious. We're playing around in the beginning. Oh, I wasn't even blocking? Oh, the spectral flames. 
Ow. Okay. Damn, okay. I'm trying to block that, but... Holy shit, dude. Dude. Oh, what? What? Oh, dude, all the soul flames. Wow. Okay. see Kujata for the first time. Dude, this music, what the fuck? Like, this music is insane. Leave it to me. Alexander or Kujata? I feel like I want Alexander for this fight. Something tells me that isn't good. Okay, Alexander time. Time to see what this bad boy's all about. Mind lending us a hand? The Holy Sentinel. Tracking beam and grand laser. Dude, this music is so beautiful. Oh god. laser. Oh! What 
the f oh god it's doom time okay the doom countdown has begun oh god it's look at that countdown holy shit oh my god okay bring it in Shit, dude. What the? Who feels like running wild? Oh, we're getting divine judgment during the stagger. I feel like this might actually kill it. I was gonna save both my limit breaks for this finishing blow, but it just got like Alexander judgment. Oh, dude, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> dang, it got divine judgment in. How good is that for this enemy? Alexander was like, save your limits. I'll finish him. <sighs> Rancor everlasting. Well done. You've become quite the formidable fighter. <laughs> sure have. So, does this mean I passed the test? <laughs> oh, oh. I'm afraid that decision is not mine alone to make. <sighs> Let us consult with one more qualified. Watcher's Verdict. That was an awesome fight. Great design. Great music. It's amazing. The only thing I would have added to that experience would have been the transformation from the face instead of just appearing out of the ether. You know, I love that element of it. It was so creepy. There's just something that PlayStation 1 or like older graphics do with their limitations that is so terrifyingly unsettling because like it's something you lose in the uh, the more, the better gra the graphics get. There's something about that charm sometimes that you lose. Just that, I I'll forever have that image of that face burned in my mind. The Wall of Honor. The Watcher of the Vale fought valiantly and offered up his life in defense of our home. As you see, he still watches over us to this very day. Wait, is that... Seto? My father? No, there's no way. The poisoned arrows of the Gi transformed his body into stone, and there he has stood ever since, his watch eternal, our savior. What about my mom? Did she know what had happened to him? Oh, oh, oh. why, of course she did. It was, after all, she and Seto who asked me to seal off the cave. But why? Why did she never tell me the truth? Because she knew that if she did, you would attempt to seek your father out all by yourself. Your parents strove to keep our veil safe. But there is one thing they fought even harder to protect. You, Nanaki, their son. She was afraid. Because I was too small and weak. <laughs> Back then, perhaps. But not anymore, heavens no. You've become a fine warrior in your own right. And that is precisely why I brought you here. 
But this is not where your journey is meant to end, my dear boy. You must leave the Vale once more. But I'm a Watcher now. I gotta protect our home like he did. Listen to me, Lama King. When I first heard your friend's emphatic warnings, I dismissed them outright. No more than the ravings of misguided youths. When you've lived as long as I have, you start to believe you've seen it all, and no surprises remain. But I realize now how very foolish I have been. The eyes that I thought saw the world clearly have grown blind to new possibilities. But... I would hate to impede your progress any further. I bid you leave, Nanaki, before, like me, you become inured to your own ignorance. With sharper eyes and keener ears, go forth and in my stead seek the great truths of our world. Look after him for me. Don't worry, we will. You failed this trial, my boy. Continue your training and try again. Are you up to the task, Nanaki? You bet I am. After all... I am Nanaki. Watcher of Cosmo Canyon. Son of Seto, protector of our veil. <laughs> the shades, he just put his sunnies on. <laughs> To cover the tears. What the fuck? Hearken unto me. Um. My name is Guy Natak. Oh, brave and noble Seto. I beseech you once more. Hear the urgent pleas of my people. My thanks, Seto. You are as magnanimous as ever. The warrior Nanaki. And you, the Setra. Come with me. That was... Oh, an exciting turn of events indeed. We'll back you up for two thou. No. This one's free. Whoa! <laughs> oh, dude. I, I almost have no notes. The only notes I have to say is it's perfect. Dude. Oh. The only thing preventing me from bowling my eyes out this time was the fact that Gein Attack showed up to go, What's going on, fellas? What the hell? 
That's crazy. Oh, dude, they, they handled it. They handled it perfectly because he he announces that he's the protector and that he's his father's son and Seto cries through the stone, dude. I was, I, I was waiting for the tears this whole time. It looks so good here. Look at him on this mountain facing everyone off. Um, the goddamn surprise that our party just rocks up, you know, like <laughs> they just appear. Oh yes, and everyone else is here now. They decided to follow along. Um, dude, absolutely incredible. I have had um, Red 13 Nanaki's uh, promo art as my phone uh, wallpaper since the um, since before the game came out, uh, and then my other phone screen is a promo character for the only other character we haven't yet been introduced to to our party. That's both of my screens, very hotly anticipated characters. Uh, it's one of my favorite wallpapers. I love that they did the updated wallpapers from the original game for this one. Very good, very happy. Gein attack was an amazing boss fight. Again, I can't even talk anymore. Uh, Gein attack very incredible. Please look after Nanaki for us. Blessings of the planet be upon you all. And Nanaki is coming with us. We will escort fellow Bugenhagen back home. Take care, friends. I love the fake out. He's leaving the party, guys. Within that peace flesh is a tumult of emotion. See to it that Nanaki remains safe. Oh, 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 oh. Our world is filled with wonders. I bet you seek them out. God damn, dude. Uh, this is a shocking twist and turn here. There's still more to the cave of the Gi. It would be spoken to by the Gi themselves. The boss man, no less. Uh, I do have to change my equipment now because Barrett and Red 13 are no longer the only party members. So I'll do that and then we'll proceed. Time for us to head in. Uh, can anyone explain to me why we're even taking this detour? Anyone? Because some of us are on a mission to secure the material we need to, you know, save our homeland. How can you talk like that in a place like this? I'm scared out of my wits here. I don't know. This gee dude's too nice to freak me out. He may act nice, but who knows what he's planning. Stay alert. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Not whoa under Tifa's skirt. Whoa, Inlet of the Lost. Wow. Oh, he's taking us for a boat ride on a sea of Marco. Sure. Fancy a journey out onto the life stream. The home of the Gi lies beyond. Whoa, wait a minute. Now let us begin our journey. Huh. Not so fast. What's in it for us? Unless it's Materia, you can count me out. How strange you should mention Materia. My people are also in search of it. <laughs> okay, all aboard! I have something to say about this dude's voice actor. I'd have stayed longer if I could, but I'll be back soon. I promise. Cute. This is the same dude who voices the reveal trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake way back in 2015. Which is crazy, by the way. I wonder if he's going to quote any, th any of those words from the trailer. If that's intentional or not. Uh, I'm gonna... uh, maybe try swaying with the rocking of the boat? I want to move less, not more. 
Didn't seem to mind when you jumped aboard. Well, only because you mentioned materia. Be quiet. The planet is listening. And what's wrong with that? Anything that reaches the planet's ears, in due time, reaches those of the Cetra. Unfortunately, the Cetra are not a tolerant people. Excuse me, am I intolerant too? I'm Cetra. <laughs> you are indeed one of them. By lineage alone. You know not of their history. That has been lost to time. Their history? Consider your ignorance a blessing. The Cetra's past is fraught with horror and sorrow. Wow, this is so unexpected. Ah, oh, this is so unexpected. <laughs> so there I am, on the ground, bleeding out, watching everything go dark. Thinking, this is it. This is how it ends. Only, it isn't. Suddenly, the wind picks up out of nowhere. It tugs at me so hard, it feels like it's tearing my soul right out of my body. Next thing I know, I'm back in the orphanage. But nobody can tell me who found me or how I got there. It's a miracle. Sounds like what happened to me. Whole freaking army unloading on my position. One minute, I'm outnumbered, and the next, I'm alone. None of it makes any sense. I somehow managed to beat the odds and wake up here, alone. Why in the hell did fate pick me? Can't think that way. <laughs> Can't not think that way. Their luck runs out, but mine doesn't. I'm the only one who gets a pass. <laughs> and now that it's just me, what am I supposed to do? You know? Yeah, I get it. Hey, come with me. Sure, but why? We're gonna go back to Marlene. <laughs> All right, just a quick moment. We get our unexpected. Oh, protect your honor. As a soldier, um, we have the very unexpected development of the Gi giving us an expositional lore dump about the planet and Cetra, and that is so incredible. It's the same guy that voices the reveal trailer. He narrates that trailer. The memory of a star that burned eternal in our hearts. But at last, the promise has been made. It may be fear, it may be joy, but whatever it is, let us embrace. Like, it's like, what? That, like, I have not felt joy in my life, so, no, that's kidding. I'm kidding. But like, <laughs> no, I have not felt joy in my life since 2015. But like, obviously not. But like, 
that reveal of Final Fantasy VII Remake in 2015 had me bouncing off the walls, right? There was never a day quite like that day. You see the viral video of the uh, Easy Allies now, but the old game trailers boys, you know, Bossman, uh, Huber, and Brad just freaking the hell out over Final Fantasy VII Remake's announcement. And that's what I was doing. That's exactly what I was doing. Um, and hearing that dude's voice was just crazy. It's taken me right back to that. That's an incredible casting choice to have that voice come in. Very well done. And I'm very excited to get more of what's happening That Brand new stuff. Brand new stuff. Really incredible. And right as you're met with an unexpected turn of events, what is more unexpected than Zack? <laughs> Goddamn. Uh, and they're talking about their survival. And how fate chose them. So, how's Cloud holding up? Mako Poisoning's done a real number on him. Doubt he's in for a speedy recovery either. But hey, hope springs eternal. Right. <laughs> if he does recover, you can bet your ass he'll act like it was nothing. Shrug it off and say he's been through ten times that shit. Are we talking about the same Cloud? Come on. The guy's desperate to prove himself. Not like he needs to. Everyone knows he's a bona fide badass. Huh. Hey, why don't you try picking up some work as a merc? A Zack of all trades. Why? Because one's not enough. I'll think about it. What's going on here? What's going on here? This Biggs knows Cloud and knows his personality from Remake. But they should have never met in this time period because Zack has brought Cloud in Marco Poison to Hell, but Biggs is talking about Remake Cloud that he met that we played as. Being the bona fide badass, the jack of all trades, and he makes a zack of all trades joke here. Is that mention of a fugitive with a buster sword not a confusing statement about, like, oh my god, what? At the very beginning of the game, I thought that I misinterpreted, there's still an ex-soldier with a buster sword at large. And I got initially confused by the placement of that statement, where I was like, wait, there's another guy with a buster sword running around with this avalanche group that's still at large? And then I was like, oh, they're probably talking about Zack, because obviously he's an ex-soldier fugitive, and they're just announcing that really close together, relaying that information to the group. But then this happens, and then you're like, wait a minute. Guh? What is happening, dude? I, I don't think that there is another cloud wielding a buster sword running around in this timeline, but it must be the weird timelines being brushing up against each other. Like the fact that cloud, when we're in calm, we could hear this timeline's news announcements over the radio, but obviously Midgar is fine. Like you're getting a blend of the two. They're sort of overlapping with each other. And I think that's what's happening here, is Biggs is talking about Cloud as if he knows him here. Because of there's a bit of timeline leakage with the crack in the sky. And even Zack is confused. He's like, are we talking about the same guy? That's nuts. There's no point going into work anymore. Even if I did make it out, I've got nowhere to go. If the trains are down... My he, boyfriend... What the hell, dude? So this station holds a special place in our hearts. Well, so just the fact that we still get to robe around Midgar a little bit. My god. The top of the Shinra building was... Apparently, there are riots going on over in Sector 8. It's just one thing. Don't be taken in by false rumors. I trust we can't take any more hits. How many partings in It's reunion? crazy 
what we're hearing from these characters as well. Did you hear? Shinra's gonna try to attack the rift. Shinra's going to try and attack the rift? Okay, why would you attack that though? Okay. Is this our punishment for using too much Mako? I heard the corkscrew tunnel was pretty badly damaged. Oh, how she cries. Her lamentations echoing from sea to sea. Time grows short. Soon our planet will breathe out. Get a load of this. <laughs> okay, let's see. The destruction of Sector 7 was orchestrated by Shinra themselves. We can't let those murderers get away with it. People of Midgar fight back against our corporate oppressors by joining Avalanche. Seek us out at the lot off Petal Lane. Wow, that's bold. Yep. These guys are setting a trap for themselves. Shinra will just roll in and round them all up. Doubt public security will even bother going through the motions. Easier just to shoot and skip the paperwork. Then anyone who goes is... An idiot, I know. But idiots are what we need right now. Folks will risk it all. No, wait, don't tell me you're going. The things I do for friends. Gotta get Binks to go to Marleen. Damn, are we gonna see more of the Avalanche group in the alternate timeline? I kind of wonder how that rift looks to all the folks topside. This hey, part of the game is the big head scratching part. Life. What you're doing here? Sure, from time to time. Or all the time. Would never have guessed. Didn't used to, but things changed. Went through a lot after I joined Shinra, like a lot. I bet. I ask, because ever since I woke up, I've been wondering about what to do with all this time I've been given. Shinra will figure something out, right? I mean, they got it. We didn't even find out what the explosion was. You said before I ought to try picking up some work as a merc. Yeah. Because one's not enough. So who's the one? <laughs> Cloud. He didn't tell you? Must not have wanted the competition. When exactly did you meet Cloud? The day before we hit Reactor 1. So... Uh, how long ago was that again? <laughs> Weird. My internal clock's busted. Yeah, mine too. What's that about anyway? <laughs> Good question. My internal clock is busted. It's like everything's just happened kind of collectively at the same time because it's all like smooshed together. This is like a condensed version of events because like Cloud and Zack arrive at Midgar and so much of the events have already happened in a way that is out of control. <laughs> He's talking about Remake Cloud, that we're the one that we're familiar with, and Zack's like, the hell are you talking about? This is like, this is just absolutely crazy, dude. What the hell? So, what was the explosion? that we ran up to Biggs for. I wonder what that even was. What's going to be on the news this time? So, what do you think's going to happen to our baby? Hey, let's give them a name. We may not know what's going to happen. I have so much to be grateful for. A loving partner, wonderful children. Get to hear the name, just we'll give them a name and we'll be a family. Hey, take one of us next! 
Should have taken more picks together while we had the chance. I always hoped I'd find that special song. Wish I could have gone to Costa del Sol. What about me? Wait, you mean it? You know, I just hope I can find it. But I think I prefer being number two or three. Suits me much better. Yeah. Like, the guy who only has to worry about the how. Doesn't have to decide on the what. A minor role? Exactly. I'm no hero. So how come I was the one who got saved? Because someone needs you. You and your can-do attitude. And who might that be? Uh, whoever brought you back, I guess? And the sooner the there was Aerith, someone? Right? Who could it have been? What do you guys That's think a good question. Who picked up Biggs and took him home? Or who saved him? Hell with it! Let's just do what we want! It's just up ahead. Keep your eyes peeled. Copy. Ooh, the bike. And then, like, Cloud walks out, and he's got another Buster Sword. <laughs> Nobody, huh? Not a soul. Well, at least Shinra was a no-show too, right? Who's there? Oh. <laughs> God. Huh. New recruit? Uh, as if I'd ever join Avalanche. I just came to see what kind of morons would fall for your dumbass propaganda, that's all. But I should have known. Nobody could be that stupid. <laughs> anyway, I'm out, losers. <laughs> I told you I wasn't cut out for a leading role. And here I thought I might have been saved for a reason. Some higher purpose. <sighs> Sorry for wasting your time. Biggs! It's up to us to find our own purpose. I mean, who says it's gotta be one way? Everyone's sitting back, acting like the world's doomed, but the future's not set in stone. We're not powerless. So long as we don't lose sight of what's important. <sighs> you know, what matters most of all when the going gets tough. I don't know, hopes, dreams maybe? Something like that. So long as we've got those. And hold on tight and never let go. Like this? Like, like your life depends on it. <laughs> the world's lucky to have you. It's a start. Hmm. Anyway, I gotta run. I'll be sure to pay a visit to Cloud when I get the chance. See ya. Think about what I said. Guess I should probably head home too. You're supposed to be bringing Biggs to Marlene, brother. Home, huh? He's got to return without Biggs. We did this whole thing. <laughs> we just literally searched for him. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking god. Head home. Mom, I'm home to check up on Aerith and Cloud. Whose bike, though? And whose bag? This is very Angel of the Slums. No. Kyrie forgot her backpack, which is filled with traveling supplies. Perhaps she hoped to join Avalanche after all. I'll go drop in and say hi to Cloud, and then Cloud will be like, Oop, uh, uh, I've got Marco poisoning. I am so upset that Zack has forgotten about Biggs <laughs> and why we even went to find him in the first place. Marlene's gonna be upset. 
Oh, it's so sad walking through this dead garden, dude. Unbelievable. And everyone loves Zack. He's just such a model dude. He's great. That's why Big's like, lucky to have you in his can-do attitude. Imagine an alternate universe, and not this one, <laughs> that we're currently in, but another alternate universe where everything's the same except instead of Cloud, it's Zack who joins the avalanche, right, and goes on that journey. The character dynamics would just be so insanely different. I'd be very interested in that. With Aerith alongside him? What a different experience. I'm back. Welcome home. Welcome home. Guess who I just saw? Biggs. Really? Uh. Said he'd visit, too. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Did he say anything about Daddy or Tifa? No, uh, sorry. Forgot to ask. Aww! Zack, would you mind checking on Aerith for me? Sure. We're all headed for the same place. You'll see your Daddy and Tifa again. Soon? Soon enough, Marlene. Soon enough. Oof. That's painful. So painful. Not breaking the truth to Marlene. It's me. The wind, that was you, wasn't it? Hello in there. She felt him. You've arrived. Oh, dude, no way. Village of the Ghee. She felt him through the live stream, man. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> How's this video game real, dude? Still standing. <laughs> Welcome to the village of the Gee. Bro. Now this is a sidestep that I do not mind taking. Um, I cannot believe they're doing this. And this is so crazy. <laughs> like, oh, this is the shit that I will forever praise the remake project for because they take this concept from the original, this history of the war between the Gi and Cosmo Canyon and that invasion and they, they perfectly handle the original stuff there and expand upon it. And then this, then they go, oh, what if we went to the homeland of the Gi. What if we actually learnt more about their side and the planet and the Cetra and all of it? This is such an incredible opportunity for that. Oh yeah, and then that, let's also throw a bit of Zack in the mix there. And he holds her hand and she feels it. Cloud sleeps and he dreams and he envisions 
the alternate timeline. The sorry man, feel like I failed you. And Zack touches Aerith and it and it resonates with her. Like Cloud and Aerith are alive and awake and well in this reality. And then they're comatose in the other one. Barrett and Tifa and Red are dead in the other reality. And they're alive here. Zack is dead in this timeline, but he's alive in the other. It's like there's this we're seeing like this this balance here. For those that are alive, the others are either dead or asleep. Biggs is this lucky one that survived. Jesse and Wedge perished, and Biggs in this timeline, all three of them. Wedge just a little later than the rest. But goddamn, do I have questions. Crazy. Ceremonial staff, dude. Alright. Give Aerith her new weapon. Alright, we lose a couple of materia slots. A sacred staff used as part of a ritual prayer to the planet. An ATB ward. Fill ATB charges within the ward to increase your allies' ATB gauges. God, that's such a good support ward. Activate the effects of the ward one time only while ward is on the field. Okay. Incredible. Um, let me just adjust some materia then in that case because I will... I don't need to adjust any materia because the two that we lose is okay. Uh, we got reprieve. Duration of applied beneficial status effects. Ooh, that's very good actually. And ward duration. Very good. It makes me want to change um, what we've got going on here. Just to at least give Aerith uh, the buffing effect so it can spread to the party. place seems nice. Look at this. Welcome to our domain, children of the planet. <laughs> Y'all hear that just now? Our flesh is gone, yet our spirits are condemned to linger. Outsiders such as we are unwelcome, forever denied the planet's embrace. I feel for you, and only imagine how tough that's been. My kin now dwell within these effigies. I beseech you, lend them your ears. Long has it been since they have had an audience. <laughs> Long ago, upon a foreboding sky, they're not bound to the planet, and so she rejects them. Because you have to come from the life stream to return to it. Which means these dudes can't die, right? <laughs> They're invincible! I'm not sure that's something to celebrate. Being stuck as spirits with no hope of release sounds like a fate worse than death. As if you know anything about dying. Uh, I mean... Are you even really alive? <laughs> Another stuck spirit, perhaps? We shall not rest till the materia is ours. You and me both. Like the Magnus materia?
long to lay hands on the materia. They're doing a full chant about Materia and what they want. And what they're doing? It's crazy. Talk about what they want to do and achieve with Materia. Now! I'm blowing my mind over here. Blowing my own mind just by listening to all of this shit. I just can't even think straight. Man. Master the Moogle Kaboom ability, there you go. Alright, so there's Kate Sith's ability. I need to master Yuffie's ability as well, and Aerith's and Barret's. <laughs> this music, this chanting, this atmosphere. Look at these statues, dude. It was our fate to be spurned by the planet forevermore. Thus did we resolve to forge our own path to salvation. With materia, you mean? We all the materia of peace. The materia of peace. Holy, the white materia. Gotta be. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Like, this, this is killing me. Yeah. 
Dude, I am, I'm effectively speechless. This whole section has just stunned me. This area reminds me uh, of a um, very late game, original Final Fantasy VII uh, spoilers. When we are in the northern crater, all the way down there, on our way to the final battle, and you pick the left or the right path, this area that we're running through right now reminds me of the right path, because it's all bones and death and red fire. Like, it's very similar aesthetically to the right path that you take in the northern crater. And then the life path, uh, sorry, the left path is all like green and life stream and uh, much different. But yeah, it has like the bones that you run through, it's crazy. That's what I'm thinking about here. Our ultimate salvation is cessation. It is nothingness. Our wish is not to exist, but rather to no longer exist. Ultimate salvation is nothingness? Okay. We prefer purest of materia. We place our hope and faith. We need Yuna to perform the sending, guys, like I keep saying. <laughs> to the far plane they go. Damn, dude. I got a sinking feeling. I think we probably don't want to overstay our welcome here. It's hard to feel at ease around folks whose only desire is death. And if the planet won't let them have it, well, who's to say they won't let the planet have it? Save uh, me! Sure. Don't you think someone responsible like me ought to hang on to that materia? So it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. I think we shouldn't get involved at all, Lassie. Little late for that. <laughs> what do you think he wants us to do for him? Steeped in our one desire. Purest of materia no more. With pain and spite they lack. Steeped in our one desire. Purest of materia no more. Not the white materia. Only the opposite one. Steeped in our one desire. Because it gives them death. Oh, dude. Right, I misinterpreted their message here at the start. Death is peace for them. It's the black materia, obviously. Here I am thinking peace materia is holy. It's the exact opposite. Makes so much sense. Whatever that materia is, we can't let them have it. No matter how much they want it. Don't know how far we can let this go. But for now, we play along. Okay, this is huge. This is huge. This is major. And a uh, silly misunderstanding on my part there to for them to go peace. And I'm thinking, okay, holy, the white materia holy for peace. But they can't return to the live stream. And then Kate Sith is like, well, maybe they'll let the planet have it, you know, as a revenge. Because if, like, they're not allowed to return... This is what they're focusing on here. Enemies of the planet. So to them, peace is the end of it all. The ultimate black materia. Black and white materia at odds. So they are using the gi 
and adding that to give more lore, story, and context to the black materia. What a welcome and pleasant surprise. I really like that. Because it's just so fucking crazy. While this music plays, dude. Dude, the reunion may bring fear, but whatever it brings, dude, this is literally the way that that first trailer and his voice talks about things, it makes so much sense. Absolutely insane. Cool to see the resurrection in action there. I'm trying to I keep switching my targets. Let me focus on my guy, will ya? Trying to go for the sorcerer. Oh, we got them both out. Okay. So much to take in that I'm losing my mind, and I'm not even focusing on my ship properly. <laughs> stream can never join its flow. One cannot return to that from which one did not arise. And so our souls sought refuge here. Yet idleness brought no solace. Our days, a penance imposed by the planet for the sin of our existence. And now, our only wish is to be freed from this prison, to be granted true release. I was thinking that potentially the white materia and holy could be like the ultimate spell to like cleanse them because they're undead. So you know how I'm thinking like phoenix downs and healing spells and holy magic could like defeat the undead. That's where my brain was going for white materia. Shrine to oblivion. Sure. From the planet, we claim the greatest of materia, a most sacred treasure, and imbued it with our desire for freedom.
After an eternity, the materia began to stir, and thus did we rejoice, knowing that salvation was within our grasp. We rejoiced, so convinced were we that our prayers for release had not been in vain. Yet the loathsome Cetra trespassed upon our lands and stole the treasure that would grant us deliverance. Wow. Therefore, we ask that you retrieve it. The Black Materia, key to our oblivion. Please, it alone can liberate us from this endless dream. The Gi cannot rest until our sacred treasure has been restored to us. Moreover, in redressing the crime of her ancestors, the Cetra may help us to let go our ancient grudge. Where is it? It is said the orb lies within a place of Cetra worship. A place of Cetra worship? Or temple? You know what? I have an idea. At least, I think I do. Forgive me, Hollow One, if I regard you with suspicion. Now hold on there. I'm friend to one and all, thanks to my crystal ball. No matter your need, I have the right read. He's strange, but you can trust him. Really. Huh? Alas, it appears we have been discovered. I trust you will return our materia to its rightful home. Only you can end our torment. Whoa, the live stream, the planet has taken our group away. It's gone. Ah, ah, ah. Get away from there. Get, uh, get out of there. The next morning. Ah, uh, I guess we're back. Yeah. Ha. Huh. We need to get moving. Right! I'll make you proud, Dad. Just wait. Something I also definitely need to say about this moment here with Nanaki jumping up and howling at Seto is I was so happy about how they did it because I was so worried because at every single moment in this game so far, we had had Red 13 like growling and making noises that was very clearly like a voice actor doing dog noises, right? And that was really worrying me because there's a moment where there's like a a bit of a howl when he's sad and I was like oh no if I hear him do that howl during this scene it will ruin it <laughs> I don't want to hear some like human trying to mimic a howl for this scene it needs to be perfect and they used an actual genuine proper howl and I was very happy about that because like thank god <laughs> Because every time Red was doing his fake, like, arr, 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 I'm like, that's a human doing a voice, you know? It doesn't sound like an actual dog growl. So, uh, yeah. I just wanted to also mention they handled that perfectly. I'm glad. Uh, we just had a spiritual gi journey where they told us the lore of the Black Materia. It was actually created by the gi to summon the ultimate destructive magic meteor to end their suffering. Now, that is very well done. That's great. And the planet went, oh, no, 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 kids. Get away from the bad strangers. 
they don't they don't have nice plans for the planet here. Let's just take you away from there. Incredible though. Uh, so I guess Bugenhagen went. to see you oh. again. Yeah, he went back. Allow me to escort you to fellow Bugenhagen. Please, this way. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, guys, um, time for us to come back. We're gonna get given the magical shortcut that wasn't here before back home. Hook, <laughs> <laughs> line, and sinker. Those undead suckers actually think we're gonna give them back their materia. They called it their salvation or whatever. But to me, it sounded more like something with the potential to wreak some serious havoc. Nope. No way in hell are we letting them have it. Can't let him have it either. Him? Sephiroth. Did no one else sense him? No. You're the resident expert. If you say Sephiroth was there, I'll believe you. Wait, wait, wait. So, are you saying Sephiroth's after the Black Materia too? Probably. Better to assume he is. Well, come on! Let's go, let's go! Can't let anyone get between me and my materia! I wonder how this is scene is going to go with Yuffie being so materia hungry that being given the ultimate one, Yuffie's going to freak out over it. And yes, we had our little vision of Sephiroth with the Whisper magic again. To follow him in there. So that gives us a little hint of Sephiroth wanting it too. And the great thing is, if we just left it alone, it would stay that way. Um, I so wonder where this lift is. I gotta ask, how do you know about the Setra Temple anyway? Uh, well, like, uh, I wouldn't say I know about it exactly. Not directly, anyway. What's that supposed to mean? I just recall some document or other discussing its existence. If we can get to a Shinra terminal, I should be able to find it again. Terminal, huh? They said any up here? I think so. But I bet old Boogie will know for sure. Old Boogie. Um. Hey, what if you just logged off your cat Sith uh, robot and went to your own computer, you bastard? <laughs> Alright, where does this take us out? Path of Return. Bugenhagen, you're telling me we could have just gone in here the whole time? I know that that totally ta takes away the purpose of it being a trial, but that's so funny. <laughs> Thank heavens you're alive. I feared you might have returned to the planet. Oh, come on. We both know you didn't need to worry about me. After all, I am the son of Seto the Watcher. Forgive me. But if I recall correctly, Shinra should have set up a transmission terminal here in Cosmo Canyon, so... Where is it? Oh... What did become of that thing? Ah, yes. Now I remember. I was so fascinated by the technology it employed, I did some tinkering. Some tinkering, I say. Though it was quite a lot. Huh. But now it serves a decidedly more... practical purpose. You've got to be kidding me! Oh, well, do you know about a Setra temple? A temple, you say? If you mean a place where they worshipped gods, none exist. The Setra never engaged in such practices. I didn't know that. Maybe it was referred to as such by someone ignorant of their culture. If instead it is a site of importance to the Setra that you seek, Texts do speak of one, and of the pains taken to conceal it. So, it does exist? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Perhaps, though I know not where it is. Huh? And even should you find it, I would urge caution. They were a star-crossed people. To follow in their footsteps is to court tragedy. <sighs> However, the rewards may yet outweigh the risks. You must bring every one of your senses to bear. For then no secret will elude you, however well hidden. And when you return home, I hope you'll share your discoveries with me. Fellow Bugenhagen! What is it? 
I'm a little busy here. Another man in a black robe has come. What should we do? Well now, a friend of yours? Where'd you see him? Oh, uh, the village gate. We should check it out. Yeah. That's a surprising thing as well. Like, I'm actually, like, surprised that black robes weren't here before us. Speak with one of the guides, and they will escort you to various locations around the settlement. A privileged service offered only to guests. A fellow Bugenhagen. Nice. What a sequence, huh? God damn. <laughs> the workings of our planet are most fascinating, no? Also, cursed uh, Bugenhagen um, hands. I actually saw them. Uh, I saw his hands under the sleeve. However, yeah, there you go. You can you can just see his hands. Um, however, he has no legs. Look, he got no legs standing on this orb. Is he just a floating orb like it w I was in the original? <laughs> it's just a body floating on an orb. Where's his legs? No legs confirmed. Crazings of the planet be upon you. Are you in need of guidance? Um, we've got some Queen's blood that we can play around this place. That's for sure. I know about that. We put them off while we were exploring, checking out the place. We have... Robin and I'm pretty sure there's yeah there's three matches we can play here. So I think there's um, was it multiple levels? Yeah, the other two are up there. Oh shit! Nanaki, is this man okay? He is, albeit rather weak. I'm not sure why, though. I know Mako poisoning when I see it, and this isn't it. Nibu. I'm... Nibu. I'm... Nibu. I'm... Ain't that... Artifa and I grew up. Ah! Oh, of course! Nibelheim has a terminal. I'd bet my whiskers on it. It, uh, had a terminal. Cloud, remember when you told Gee an attack back there? That I might be weird, but you can trust me. Hey, well, even if you were lying, I'm going to prove to you that you can trust me. That I'm on your side. It's not that. We should go. Hey! <laughs> Wait, you're talking about heading to Nibelheim from here? There's no roads you can take far as I know. Maybe we can't go by land. But by air. Meaning we'll need smoke. Right then, back to the airstrip we go. Sit high wind, huh? Out. Proto relic energy signature confirmed and relatively close to you. While the signal is on the weaker side, it may serve as a good place to start. I'll send you the coordinates right away. Yes, we can't go and leave and go to Nibelheim. I've got a whole Cosmo region to collect world intel for. <laughs> I have to go and do all of my things. We've got another couple of side quests, we've got some Queen's Blood stuff. I got towers, I got proto relic, I got fucking, I got streams, I got crystals, I got battles. Things to do out here. And this random place that I've apparently been in already. Um, which is very strange. Curious indeed. Well, massive episode. And uh, this is going to be where we bring this one to a close. Uh, thank you so very much for joining me today. This has been incredible. Nothing short of spectacular. I've had such a great time. Uh, the story 
of Cosmo Canyon and Nanaki is perfect. I was actually wondering in this game if they would change things and have it so after you visit Cosmo Canyon, uh, that Red 13's name would change to Nanaki in the actual menus. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but he remains Red 13 here. Um, great scenes, great new stuff as well. Just really, really enjoyable. Had a great time. I hope you enjoyed this episode too. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time as we clear out the Cosmo Canyon region of its world intel and potentially move on to Nibelheim.